Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, there's much prayer, there's much power. And God responds to much prayer. Holy Spirit gets to stirring in the hearts of everyone who loves the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time now to hear what God has to say on this morning's message from the fifth chapter of first epistle of John. First epistle of John. <clears throat> May we stand for the reading of God's word. And after which we, the prayer we will sing, the hymn of preparation, shine on me. Prayerfully we come this morning with the message God has laid on our heart. Key verses are verse 4 and verse 13. Verse 4 and verse 13. From the fifth chapter of the first epistle of John. Prayerfully, let us read together from the New Living Translation of the Scripture. Verse 4. For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith, through our faith. Verse 13, let us read properly together. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you will know you have eternal life. I want to preach properly this morning from the message, living out our faith in Christ with confidence and full assurance of our eternal destiny. I want you to repeat those words, living out our faith in Christ with confidence and full assurance of our eternal destiny. Living out our faith in Christ with confidence and full assurance of our eternal destiny. Verse four again, for every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith. Verse 13, I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come asking that you would Take charge of these mortal vessels of ours, that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable in thy sight. From this pulpit, we ask that you would, our Father, decrease me, that you might increase through me, that you will preach, and you will speak. We would see Jesus and him only, that your word will go forth rightly divided. We're praying for the members in the pew, worshiping, our Father, by live streaming, that we all might have, our Father, spiritual attentiveness to you and to your word and to what the Holy Spirit is saying in these times in which we are living. Make us mindful. You said in your word, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. We pray, our Father, for the lost, those who are separated from the love of Jesus Christ, that today will be the day of salvation that they will not delay any longer because tomorrow is not promised. We ask our Father that you will revive your church, that you will speak to the hearts of those, our Father, who need a word from the Lord, and you're able to reach them through your word because your word is so active and living, sharper than any two-edged sword. Your word can discern what is needed and you're able to apply truth and hope and healing and faith. And 
And so, Master, we ask that you would have your own way as we stand this morning as a vessel fitted to thy use, that through this vessel your word will go forth, and that it will go forth rightly divided. We ask all of these things in the name that is above every name, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Shine on me. Praising him said, Amen. 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 If your Bible's open this morning to 1 John chapter 5, I'm preparing to take the notes on this message this morning. Permit me to begin this message prayerfully this morning. By noting that well-known author David McCaslin in a true story on the subject of spiritual victory with a specific focus on the subject defeat or victory taken from the text that's inclusive of the 
first 13 verses of chapter 5 of 1 John shares the following message that's relevant to the text this morning. He wrote, each year on June 18th, the Great Battle of Waterloo is called, recalled in what is now Belgium. On that day in 1815, Napoleon's French army was defeated by a multinational force commanded by Duke of Wellington. Since then, the phrase, to meet your Waterloo, has come to mean to be defeated uh, by someone who is too strong for you, by a problem that is too difficult for you or me. Kathleen continues this story remarking, when it comes to our spiritual lives, some people feel that ultimate failure is inevitable. Some people live that way, that ultimately failure will come to them. And that it's only a matter of time until each of us will meet our Waterloo. But in the text this morning, the Apostle John dismisses that pessimistic view. He refutes that pessimistic view when he wrote to followers of, Je of, Je of Jesus that were scattered in Asia Minor, needing to hear word from the Lord because their faith was being shaken by false prophets. He is recorded in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, one of the key verses from the NIV translation saying, everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. I want you to say that, even our faith. The Apostle John weaves this theme of spiritual victory, it is noted throughout this first epistle of John, and he urges believers then as well as for every generation thereafter, including this one, not to love the things of this world and that the world offers, which will soon fade away. Instead, the admonishment to Christians then and Christians today and throughout the centuries is that we are to love God, we are to please God. This is what he has promised. And John says, eternal life. I want you to say that. The Lord has promised eternal life. The apostle John writes in 1 John chapter 2, which is a part of your scripture insert, uh, chapter 2, the, to the believer that, and all those who had been affected by negativity in this on the part of false prophets, these words that are inclusive in your scripture from 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. And it's written again to every generation. Let's read verses 15 uh, through 17. 1 John chapter 2. Let's read out loud. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. Verse 17, and this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does 
what pleases God will live forever. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, McCaslin closes his devotional message and thoughts on this particular text and this story by noting, while every believer may have their ups and downs in life, and he could extend that to trials and tribulations, joys and sorrows in this life, even some tough battles to face that uh, feels like defeats, the ultimate victory for all believers, the ultimate victory for everyone who placed that trust in Jesus Christ is power. Our victory is in Jesus Christ who says all power and all authority is in my hand. Can I get a witness? Our victory is in Jesus the Christ. At this early point of the message, allow me to ask the question of you to consider an answer. Do you possess a saving faith this morning? Do you possess, and I'm qualifying the word faith, a saving faith in Christ Jesus our Lord? Are we saved? And does the Lord recognize that we depend on him in all situations, in all challenges, in all setbacks? Can I get a witness? Do we possess a saving faith? In his comments, Dr. Kenneth W. Osbeck, in his book entitled Amazing Grace 366 Hymn Stories, lifts up the truth that saving faith must always be reflected in working faith. I want you to say that saving faith must always be reflected in working faith. Underline that working faith, working faith. Our response of faith to the redemptive work of Christ transforms us, changes us. But then we need a daily motivating faith. Each day we need a daily motivating faith if we want to live an overcoming life each day. To live by faith, brothers and sisters, is to believe with conviction that God's purpose for us will ultimately pre prevail. I want you to say that ultimately. God's purpose for us will prevail, will prevail. In fact, prevailing faith anticipates victory, and prevailing faith celebrates that victory in advance. <laughs> I wish I had a free in church. There are those who say, I have to wait and see if the blessing is going to come through. Can I get a witness? And, 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 and when that blessing comes through, then I will praise the Lord. I wish I had a praying church. But a prevailing faith, I want you to say prevailing. That means though come what may from day to day. A prevailing faith anticipates victory and it celebrates that victory before the victory even comes. Praise his holy name. In the Old Testament, and they count over in 2 Chronicles, if you look over there, flip that quickly and hold your hand in 1 John chapter 5, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20 through 22, you'll find the battle that the good king Jehoshaphat was involved with with Judah. They had nations that surrounded Judah that were enemies to Judah. And uh, they were giving Judah a hard time, but King Jehoshaphat was in touch with God, and he was a faithful and good king. And the record is, amen, that, that, that the, the Lord God fought their battles without them having to expel hardly any energy. The Lord fought their battles. I want to ask this morning, are any of us, amen, able to testify that there have been times when God had fought our battles and we didn't have to do anything but stand still? and see the salvation of the Lord. If that's, their, if that's your witness, then say amen. 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 amen.
Amen. God doesn't need us to fight a battle. We need God. Can I get a witness? Osbeck continues wisely noting that our faith uh, does not develop uh, merely through uh, intellectual approval to biblical teaching or through wishful thinking, but rather it is a lifetime commitment. I want to say that lifetime commitment. Our faith is a lifetime commitment to the person of Jesus Christ and, and responding to him continually in obeying his word. It's a lifelong commitment. Can I get a witness? Some people say, well, I got my religion long ago. Yes, but the question is, what are you doing with it now? I came to Christ long ago. Are you growing in wisdom and in knowledge? And can I get a witness? Uh, amen. Is the Lord stretching your faith? Uh, can I get a witness? Or are you doing more than you ever thought you would be doing because the Lord has given you the challenge and given you e and equipped you and sustained you to do what you're doing? That's why when I look back over life and look back over those saints in the past, and they didn't allow age, to, amen, to keep them from worshiping and working and serving the Lord. Even in this church, can I get a witness? The Apostle Paul understood this truth when he wrote to the church at, at Rome, the Christians at Rome, and said in, in Romans chapter 10, verse 17 from the New Living Translation, so faith comes from hearing. Faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. Faith comes from hearing the good news about Jesus Christ. Amen. Osbeck concludes his comments on saving faith by introducing a hymn entitled Faith and Victory, which was published first in 1891 in what is called the Christian Endeavor Hymnal. The author's name, John Henry Yates, was a licensed Methodist preacher who was later ordained by the Baptists. Uh, I want you to properly listen to these words that God inspired this, hymn, this hymnist, John Henry Yates, to write as he recognized uh, the recognition that we have to live out our faith and recognize that our li in living out our faith, our faith is not in vain. John Henry Yates wrote, encamped along the hills of light, ye, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe and veils below, let all our strength be hurled Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. His banner over us is love, our sword, the word of God. We tread the road, the saints above, with shouts of triumph trod. By faith, they, like a whirlwind's breath, swept on over every field. The faith by which they conquered death is still our shining shield. On every hand, the foe we find Drawn up in dread array, let tents of ease be left behind and onward to the fray. Salvation's helmet on each head with truth all girt about. The earth will tremble near our tread and echo with our shout. To him that overcomes the foe, Yeats wrote, white raiment shall be given. Before the angels, he shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame will vanish all the host of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory, he wrote. Faith is the victory. I want you to say that faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Faith in the omnipotent God, the omniscient God, the omnipresent God, the God from everlasting to everlasting, who has no beginning and no ending, who super rules, the, as the old deacons used to say, heaven and earth. Faith is the victory. Faith. We, 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 we used to sing hymns of faith in, in churches such as, amen, my faith looks up to thee. I wish I had a praying church. Thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine, now hear me while I pray. Take all my sins away. Oh, let me from this day be holy thine. 
Can I get a witness? Faith, faith. Where is your faith in God? I wish I had a praying church. Amen. Oh, for faith that will not shrink, though pressed by every foe, that will not tremble on the brink of any earthly woe. Lord, give us such a faith as this. Then whatever may come, we'll taste even now the hallowed bliss of thine eternal home. We've come this far by faith. Even America. I wish I had a praying church. And there, was some, there, there are praying people in America. Can I get a witness? All our battles have not been won with weapons, bombs, and guns. Can I get a witness? God has been in the midst fighting battles for us. And that's why soldiers have been able to come home after a rugged battle. Some didn't make it, but they went on home to be with the Lord. I wish I had a praying church. We have come this far by faith. Faith is the victory. Not talk, but faith. Can I get a witness? Not intellectual understanding and knowledge, but a man action, a man trusting and leading and depending on the Lord. We've come this far by faith. As we focus on this text this morning, prayerfully we find in the first five verses of our text that the Apostle John in the, these verses uh, returns to, amen, three tests and, of saving faith. In 1 John chapter 2, he returns there in chapter 5 in order to identify the child of God who has been born again through Jesus Christ and who has experienced regeneration. Those tests include, first of all, doctrine. I want you to write that doctrine. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18 through verse 27. He gives the test of doctrine. In these first five verses of our text this morning, we find the test of doctrine. Secondly, we find the test of obedience. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 through 6. And then thirdly, we find the test of love lifted up by the apostle John in these first five verses of our text this morning, chapter 5. And the test of love is expounded upon in 1 John chapter 2, verse 7 through 11. My friends, it should be noted that while the apostle John focuses on these evidences of the new birth, he is also clear in our text that the new birth precedes faith. The new birth precedes faith. There are several truths lifted up in our text today that emphasizes if we truly love God as believers in Christ, we will obey his commandments and that they are not burdensome. I want you to say that they are not burdensome. And so the first truth that is that John lifts up in this text this morning is that we prove our love for God with an obedient faith. We, we prove our love for God. We say we love God, and God is looking at us and wondering, why aren't you proving it? I wish I had a praying church. The first truth is that we prove our love for God through an obedient, obedient faith. Amen. Amen. As a true Christian, believers are able to overcome the world by their faith and demonstrates their salvation by obeying the commands of God. As we look in verses 1 through 3 of our text this morning from 1 John chapter 5, first three, first three verses, the Apostle John lifts up the truth that born-again Christians will love God the Father. They will love their children. They will love, they will love his children, that is, as well as uh, they will recognize that we are a family. Amen, amen, amen. I want you to say that believers, believers. Love, God. love God. They love their fellow believers. Because we recognize we are the same family. We're the same family. Same family. We're family. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm family. I'm family. I'm family. We're family. And a family that's anchored in the Lord will act like a family that is anchored in the Lord. That will be a love 
between family members that even the devil can't break up. I wish I had a praying church. There will be forgiveness and understanding and compassion and kindness and gentleness and goodness and faithfulness and serving. Amen. A family, amen, that, 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 that is anchored in the Lord works together. They serve together. They walk together. They pray together. They listen to each other. Can I get a witness? They're not strangers to each other. But they are very much acquainted with one another. Then in verses 4 and 5, the Apostle John emphasizes that born-again Christians are born to win, not to lose. We are winners. We are winners. <laughs> we are not losers. Can I get a witness? Please read with me now the first five verses of our text this morning from the first epistle of John. Let's read prayerfully out loud. And as we read, may the Holy Spirit give us discernment and understanding as he talks to us. Let's read. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. In his timely comments on the first five verses of this uh, text, D D Dr. David Jeremiah on the subject of, of birthmarks, I want you to say that birthmarks, Birth, birthmarks of, of a believer lifts up birthmarks that John, the Apostle John, pins in these first five verses. And I want you to take note of these birthmarks of a believer. Birthmarks, birthmarks. Uh, he presents five tests that will help to determine if a person is really a Christian. These tests are given as birthmarks to assure true believers of their salvation when they would want to doubt their salvation or the Satan would have them to doubt their salvation. The first test is a faith test. I want you to write that down, faith test. What do we believe? Amen. And in whom do we believe? Is, is the, our doctrine, our teaching sound? Is it according to scripture? It is, a, is it the word of God? And, and, and that, that faith test is found in 1 John chapter four. Verse 15, for those who are taking notes and will go back and read. And First John chapter 5, verse 1. Then the second test is life test. I want you to write that down, life test. How do we live? That, that, that's the next test. How, how do you live from day to day? D do we keep God's commandments as we live from day to day? How do we live? How do we, uh, amen, go in and, and, and go out and meet people in the public? Are we the same behind closed doors as we are out in public? Can I get a witness this morning? Amen. Amen. Is our, is, 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 is our house in order? Is our home in order? Or, or we will have to do some cleaning up before we allow other fellow members of the family to come into our homes. I wish I had a praying church. We don't want them looking in the refrigerator. Can I get, I wish I had a praying church. Is our house in order? Or are there things that need to be thrown out now? Life tests. Do we keep God's commandments? That's from the pulpit to the, amen, the usher post. Do we keep God's commandments? Amen. How, how, how do we live? How do we live? And then the third test is love test. Amen. Do we love our brothers and sisters? We can say it, but do we really mean it? And the scripture text for this test is found in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 11, verse 20 and verse 21 of chapter 4. 
do we love our brothers and sisters. We're commanded to love God, and then we're commanded to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And then there's the growth test. I want you to say that growth test. growth test. Are we overcoming more and more as we walk with the Lord? Are we growing daily in his word? A amen. A a a amen. Are, are we, amen, pressing on toward the mark, toward the prize of the upper calling, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord? Are we saying to God, Lord, I want to grow. I, I want to keep growing in wisdom and in knowledge of you and in closeness and fellowship and relationship to you. I want to keep growing. Whatever that means and whatever it takes and whatever I have to go through because growth is not always easy. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. There, 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 amen. Amen. Sometimes obstacles will get in the way. Can I get a witness? And God says, that obstacle is there for you to do, know what to do. You call on me, you'll get an answer. I'll help you to understand and to get around or to come over. Uh, amen, those obstacles. Maybe an obstacle of illness, an obstacle of financial troubles, a wayward child, a wayward family member. Can I get with you? Maybe death. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Trouble can get in our way. Sorrow, unexpected, can get in our way. Day starts out sunshine and then it ends up cloudy and then storming and raining. I wish I had a praying church. Amen. Do we love our, uh, the growth test? Do, are we overcoming more and more as we walk with the Lord? And that test is found in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and verse 5 of our text this morning. In these first five verses. Then there's the sin test. I want you to see that sin test. Do we avoid sin, brothers and sisters? Or do we continue sinning, living in, in sin, and considering living in sin as acceptable to God? And the test for that is found in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 through 5 through 10. In chapter 3, verse 4 through 9, when, when we came across this test, I thought about that old hymn, We Cannot Live in Sin. The old deacons used to sing that me to him and feel the Savior's love. His blood can make my spirit clean and write my name above. We can't live in sin. Amen. In leadership, amen, people ought to be transparent and honest. First of all, with God with themselves, and then with one another. Can I get a witness? We're to live above the world. Can I get a witness? We're to live above the world. Again, my friends, the first truth of our text from the first five verses is that we prove our love for God with an obedient faith. We prove our love. We prove our love. And it's not that God doesn't already know but, but in proving our love, we are able to bless others in whatever God calls us to do. And they're able to see Christ in us as we're going about doing the wonderful work of the Lord. Amen. Now, secondly, according to verses 6 through 12 of our text, the Apostle John lifts up the truth of the certainty of God's testimony that God has given us eternal life. God has given us eternal life already. He has given us eternal life. And that this life is in his son, Jesus the Christ, according to verse 11 of our text this morning from 1 John chapter 5. My brothers and sisters, not only that, but to accept this testimony of God is to have eternal life. One has to believe the testimony that the God has given us, amen, eternal life through his son. We must believe that, accept that. But if we reject it, the Apostle John says in these verses, that we are calling God a liar. We're calling God a liar. Let's read. It's here in the text. Let's read verses 6 through 12. New Living Translation. Let's read. And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's son by his baptism in water and by shedding his blood on the cross, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the spirit who is true confirms it with his testimony. So we have these three witnesses, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and all three agree. Since we believe human testimony 
surely we can believe the greater testimony that comes from God. And God has testified about his Son. All who believe in the Son of God know in their hearts that this testimony is true. Those who don't believe this are actually calling God a liar because they don't believe what God has testified about his Son. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. Does not have it. Does not have it. And, and it's, 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 it's true today that, that God only knows those who are saved because people can pretend, put on a facade, say the right things, be workers in the church. Can I get a witness? But God knows the heart, and he knows the intent of the heart. Can I get a witness? Amen. That's why, amen, it's, it's good to know songs and hymns because they're all in sync with Scripture. There's a song of the church used to sing, search me, Lord, search me, Lord. If you find anything that shouldn't be, <laughs> how many of you remember that song? Just say amen. amen. Take it out and strengthen me, for I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. Those who are believers are, are broken, have been broken, and God has picked up the broken pieces, and through life and through that uh, spiritual journey, he has been putting the broken pieces back together in his own way. And that's why many Christians can say, I'm stronger today in my faith and in my walk with God than ever before. And it's not because of us, it's because of him. It's because of Christ who says, if any man come after me and deny himself, take up his cross and follow me, he, he says, I will bless you. Amen. God will bless those who surrender themselves to him. Now, thirdly, the third truth recorded in verses 13 through 15 is that believers in Christ, disciples of Christ, born-again Christians, and yes, all who come by faith to, to trust in the Lord as their Savior can be certain and assured of having the gift of eternal life. We can be assured, we can have an assurance that we have the gift of eternal life. We don't have to worry about our soul. We don't have to worry about where we will spend eternity. We can shout now that we're on our way home to live with God. Can I get a witness? Amen. Read with me prayerfully verses 13 through 15. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our request, we also know he will give us what we ask for. Brothers and sisters, in this key verse, verse 13, in lifting up the message of the Apostle Paul regarding the assurance of eternal life, that all born-again believers uh, have, before going any further in this message, we should take note that the word know, K-N-O-W, know, in this key verse, verse 13, is one of the key words of this entire first epistle of John. No, K-N-O-W. The Apostle John records that in 1 John 2 and 3, we know that we have come to know God. We know. Believers know we have come to know God. How many of you can say amen? amen. And then in, in, second, in, in the second chapter, verse 5 of 1 John, we know we are in him. Christ is in us, and we are in him. And then thirdly, we have the assurance that 
we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. According to 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, we'll be like him. Then we know in 1 John chapter 3, verse 14, that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers and sisters. And then in 1 John chapter 3, verse 19, we know that we belong to the truth. We belong to the truth. We belong to Jesus who says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And then we know that God lives in us, according to 1 John chapter 3, verse 24. And then we know that we live in God, according to 1 John chapter 4, verse 13. And then in verse 13 of our text, the Apostle John records these words, chapter 5. I write these things to you so that you may know that you have eternal life. We know that God hears us also. According to 1 John chapter 5, verse 15, we know. We know. Dr. Daniel L. Atkins, a man of God, author of the Christ-centered uh, exposition uh, um, on 1 John, 2nd and 3rd John, has, has gone on record saying, Christians can rest in the truths that we belong to God who answers prayer and that we have spiritual victory and that Christ is the true and only source of eternal life. In a letter, he goes on to note to a man named George Tignall, dated November 25, 1817. Thomas Jefferson was critical of state legislatures for not perceiving the important truths that knowledge is power, that knowledge is safety, and that knowledge is happiness. One, one Atkins says, my challenge, the particulars of Thomas Jefferson's statement, but there he says is a ring of truth in it to be sure. The Apostle John in our text certainly thought knowledge was important. He, he was vitally concerned that these young Christians, these little children who were being swept away and some left and some were just standing on shaky ground in our faith because of the false prophets and the false doctrines. Uh, he, he was virtually concerned about these little children uh, to know a number of things to be true because they had come to believe in Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God. In fact, a survey of the, the five chapters once again reveals at least the, the following things we know. We can know that we know God. We can know that we are in God. We can know that it is the last hour. We know the truth. We know that Jesus is righteous. We know that we will be like he, Jesus. We know that Jesus came to take away our sins. Can I get a witness? We know that Jesus is sinless. It's all in the first epistle of John. We know that we have passed out of death into life. We can know that no murderer has eternal life. 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. We can know love. We can know that God abides in us. We can know the Spirit of God. We can know the Spirit of truth and the Spirit of deception. We can know that we love God's children. We can know that we have eternal life. We can know that we will not practice sin. We can know that we belong to God. We can know that the Son of God has come. We can know that the Son of God has given us understanding. And we can know Him who is true. Atkins goes on to note, for our hearing is clear from 1 John alone that the child of God, any child of God, can know and be certain of quite a lot of things Amen. if we study God's Word. Yes. Now, my friends, the fourth truth of our text, the Apostle John lifts up according to verses 16 through 21, is that no one who is born of God continues to sin. I, I want you to say that no one born of God continues to sin. There's this mindset today in churches that people can sin and repent in prayer. 
and, and go right back to sin. Because they say, well, grace, God's grace covers me. Can I get a witness? But over in the fifth chapter of Romans, Paul is on record saying, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. And the reality of continuing in sin is God has said in the Galatians over chapter 6, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Don't play with God. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. If we sow to the flesh, we'll reap the flesh. If we sow to the spirit, we'll reap the spirit. We must be, can I get a witness? When, 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 a, when a Christian, as, you, as we struggle ourselves for, with sin that comes in our life because no one is sin free, a sinner, a, a, a saved person will not continue in sin. And God has the power to move any a man, a man strongholds out of one's life. If I'm telling the truth, put your hand together and applaud the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he came. He came to change the world. He came to save the world. He came to do what no man could do. Can I get a witness? Some parents do their best to try to, amen, get their children to act right, even as eight-year-olds. Can I get a witness? I said eight-year-olds. And they can pitch a fit in the grocery store. Can I get a witness? And if you, and if you even, uh, some, nowadays, if you, amen, chastise your children, take out your, you know, take your hand and spank them, you know, somebody's going to call that abuse and call, call the police on <laughs> Can I get a witness? But I stop by to tell you, even, even, even so, even what parents do or what we do, amen, to try to correct people, it's only one person that can change a person's life change a person's life and the only way is a heart transformation Jesus said it to Nicodemus you must be born again you got to be born again and that's God's business how many of us can testify I've been born again just hold your hand up and say thank you Jesus you've been born again it didn't happen when we came forward and gave our hand to the preacher and our name to the clerk. We asked Christ to come into our life. He knew we meant, as we were serious about it. He came. As the hymn says, I came just as I was, weary, wounded, and sad. I found in him a resting place. He has made me glad. The fourth truth, again, of our text, lifted up, is that no one who is born of God continues in sin because true believers who, who have come to know God, amen, uh, in a personal and intimate way uh, will not continue in sin. Uh, amen. The Spirit is within and the Holy Spirit brings people under conviction. And the Holy Spirit, amen. And, and the Bible tells us over in Hebrews, whom the Lord loves, he chastises. He, he corrects, he whips, he hurts for the purpose of, ins of, of, of instruction. I want us to read now verses 16 through 21 of this text. Let's read prayerfully together. If you see a fellow believer sitting in a way that does not lead to death, you should pray, and God will give that person life. Let's read on. But there is a sin that leads to death, and I'm not saying you should pray for those who committed all wicked actions are sin, but not every sin leads to death. We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning, for God's Son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. We know that we are children of God and that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and he has given us understanding so that we can know the true God. And now, 
we live in fellowship with the true God because we live in fellowship with the Son, Jesus Christ. He's the only true God, and he is eternal life. Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. Keep away from anything that might take God's place in your heart. Is there anything this morning that is, has taken God's place in our hearts? Can we say nothing? There's nothing between our soul and the Savior. Because the admonishment is, if there's nothing between, keep the way clear. Keep the way clear. And that's a daily, a daily task. Meeting God in the mornings. Having that quiet time with God. Seeking his mind. Seeking, amen, where he's at work. And saying, Lord, today I want to come and join you. Wherever you're at work. He'll give you the mind. While you're trying to figure it out. If you just... Lord have mercy. Take time to be still. And that's why so many, there are some Christians who are so, so, they're, they're, they're fruitful. Amen. They, they, they're able to do so much for the kingdom because they're in tune with God. They are, they are running with God. They are not out of step with God. They're not dragging their feet. They're not saying, Lord, get somebody else or wait till I get through. They're in touch with God. They're in tune with God. The hymn is said it like this, for those of us who are believers, yield not to temptation. For yielding is sin. Each victory will help you. Some others to win. Fight manfully onward. Dark passions subdue. Look ever to Jesus. He will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He's willing to aid you. He will carry you through. Is there a witness this morning? As I prepare to close, Oswald Chambers, in his book, that my, my utmost is highest. Amen. It points out in 1 John chapter 5, verse 16, the key verse, if anyone sees his brother sinning, a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life those who commit sin not leading to death. Chambers is on record saying, if we are not heedful, if we're not attentive, if Christians are not attentive, if Christians are not careful, if we are not mindful, if we're not cautious, if we're not prudent, if we're not circumspect, if we're not alert, amen, if we're not paying attention, we will become spiritual hypocrites. We see where other people are failing. And then we take our discernment and turn it into comments of ridicule and criticism instead of turning it into intercession prayer on behalf of those who we need to be praying for. God reveals this truth about either to others, that is to us, not through the sharpness of our minds, but through the direct penetration of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will speak to us and says, and you need to pray for that person. You may not know the exact things. You may not know what's going on, but God will speak to you. Oh, I wish I had a praying church. He, he will let you know their need of prayer. And, and somewhere along the way, if it's his will, he'll, he'll have us uh, pass the cross and, and, and then that person, God will open them up. They're ready and they're ready to share and you're ready to listen and you're ready to share. I wish I had a praying church. And then you'll know how to pray exactly for that person as they pray for you because, amen, prayer Pray, praying is a partnership. Amen. You pray for me, and I'll pray for you. Can I get a witness? Yes, it's all a part of the family. Yes, 
we pray for one another. Can I get a witness? God reveals this truth about others to us, not through the sharpness, again, of our minds, but through the direct penetration of the Holy Spirit. If we are not attentive, we will completely be unaware of the source of the discernment God has given us, becoming critical of others and forgetting that God says he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin, not leading to death. And so we must be careful as I move on to close. We must be careful that we don't become hypocrites by spending all of our time trying to get other folk to act right. And we're not even worshiping God right ourselves. I wish I had a praying church. One of the most subtle and illus elusive burdens God ever places on us as saints is the burden of discernment concerning others. He gives us discernment so that we may accept the responsibility for the souls of other people. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Have you ever been concerned about the souls of other people? Is it part of your nature now, being a Christian? You weep sometimes. You mourn. You pray. And you wait. You wait on God. He gives us discernment so that we may act responsibly and accept the responsibility for the souls of others. Can I get a witness? Amen. That their minds will become conformed to the mind of Christ we should intercede in, accor in accordance with what God says. He, he will give us, namely, life for those who commit sin not leading to death. It's not that we are able to bring God into contrast with our minds, our contact, I should say, with our minds, but we awaken ourselves to the point where God is able to convey his mind to us regarding people for whom we're to pray for. He's clear. He's clear. Can Jesus see the agony right now in any of us? Can Jesus see the restlessness in any of us? He, he, he can't unless we are so closely identified with him. As Timus closes his thought, so we, we have his view concerning the people for whom we pray. We, we need to learn to intercede wholeheartedly that Jesus will be completely in charge, overwhelmed and satisfied with our intercessory prayer. Our intercessory prayer. I'm closing now, but many Christians today are discouraged because they are not sure if they are saved. They're not sure if they have saving faith. They are discouraged. They're troubled. And don't let death creep upon them. They become really troubled. Sometimes we hear it said that if we do not know that we are saved, it is a sign that we are not saved. But that's a mistake to identify assurance with salvation. A newborn baby scarcely knows it has been born, but it has been born. Can I get a witness? Assurance comes with growth. Growth. Our assurance in Christ have grown as a result of growth. Through the years, we've been growing. And as we've been growing, God has been giving us great assurance that yes, you are my child. I walk with you. I talk with you. I wake you up. I dry away your tears. Do I have a witness? The closer we get to God, the more mature we become. Mature in the faith. Now we can tell people anywhere, I don't, I, my God is able. He's able to take care of your situation. He's able to take care of your family situation. He's able to take care of the neighborhood situation. He's able to take care of the community situation. 
my God is strong enough to take care of the nation situation. He's able to take care of the world situation. He's able. My God is able. He's able. When, when our strength is, is, is waning, when we're growing weak and tired, weary, can I get a witness? Amen. And when our temperaments become a little short, can I get a witness? That's the time to call on the Lord. Because they that wait, I said they that wait and call upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. As an eagle, they shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Can I get a witness? I don't know about you, but I've had my share of sorrows. I've had some tears to shed. Can I get a witness? There have been some cloudy days, and there have been uh, some sunshiny days. Uh, there have been some quiet, still days, and there have been some stormy days. But through it all, I said through it all, I've learned, have you learned, have we learned uh, to trust in Jesus? Have we learned to trust in God? Uh, can I get a witness? Um, my God is an able God. Uh, he's able uh, uh, to carry you through. Can I get a witness? Um, when we become Christians uh, and, uh, and, 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 and connected with Jesus, uh, Christianity and our relationship never ends. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, we began to walk with God uh, like Enoch walked with God. Uh, Enoch was so close to God uh, and his faith. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, that one day God said to Enoch, uh, you're so close to heaven now. Uh, I believe you're just going to be translated. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, and God took him on into heaven. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, uh, stop by to tell you, uh, when you walk with the Lord uh, in the light of his word, uh, assurance uh, of eternal life uh, is uh, yours to claim. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, you can say like the hymnist, uh, blessed assurance, uh, Jesus is mine. Uh, I I said, Jesus is mine. Uh, do I have any witnesses? Uh, can you say Jesus uh, is mine? Uh, oh, what a foretaste uh, of glory divine. Uh, I'm an heir uh, of salvation, uh, purchase of God. Uh, I've been born of his spirit, uh, washed in his blood. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, perfect submission. Uh, all is at rest. Uh, I, in my Savior, uh, am happy be and bless. Uh, I'm just watching uh, and waiting, uh, looking above, uh, filled with his goodness, uh, lost in his love. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, this is my story. Uh, do you have a story? Uh, can you stand up uh, and celebrate? Uh, this is our story. Uh, this is our song. Uh, we're just praising uh, our Savior. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, living by faith. Uh, I, walking in confidence I, with an assurance I, that when this earthly house I, of a tabernacle I, is dissolved, I, we've got another building. I say another building. I, another building. I, a house I, not made by hand. I, eternal I, in the heavens. I, can I get a witness? I, when the soldiers I, gave their life, I, they were on the battlefield. I, they didn't know I, if they were coming home again. I, but that's all right. I, they made peace I, with God. I, and they told their families, I, if we don't get back, I, don't worry. I, I'll meet you in heaven. I, can I get a witness? I, can I get a witness? I, oh, oh, brothers I, and sisters, I, when we all I, get to heaven, I, what a day, I, what a day, I, I say what a day, I, can you say day, I, day, I, there's no night in heaven, I, what a day, I, an unending day, I, it will be, I, 
city. Uh, we will all, uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, uh, oh, will you be there? Uh, hold your hand up uh, and say yes. Uh, when we all uh, get to heaven, uh, we'll sing uh, and shout. Uh, I said shout. Uh, I said shout. Uh, I said shout. Uh, Let me ask you, is there anybody you want to see again uh, that's going on to heaven? Uh, I say, is there anybody uh, you want to see again uh, that's going on to heaven? Uh, hold your hand up uh, and say, yes, Lord. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, yes, Lord. We have eternal life. We have it right now. What a celebration. It will be when we get to heaven. And so we're going to sing. When we all get to heaven. When we all, all get to heaven. What a day.
church is open. We extend an invitation to Christian discipleship. says you must be born again. Oh, none. If we want to see Jesus one day, we have to come to him just as we are and receive him as our Savior. None but the righteous, none but the righteous. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word and for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the truth of the gospel. We ask you, O oh God, that you will move in a mighty way now upon all who are worshiping by live streaming. We're praying, our Father, for those who are worshiping in person, that you will minister to every heart in every situation. You have told us that we can live overcoming lives through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. We can overcome the world. We can walk on by faith. We can serve this present age our calling to fulfill by your grace and by your power you stand ready to give us instructions your mind your thinking that wherever you at work our hearts are ready to join you that we might be about our father's business well master we pray we pray for this country we pray for our communities Everywhere we turn, we hear concerned people saying things are out of order now. Sin is permeating our communities. The laws of, of our land are being forsaken. Love for one another is not what it ought be and should be. There's so much evil and you see it all. But you are sovereign and you're in control. And you've told us that when we see these things happening, just know that the time is drawing now. You're coming soon. 
We acknowledge that you are from everlasting to everlasting. You're God. You created this universe and this cosmos. You created this earth. Lord, you made us all. You created our first parents. And Lord, you've been covering us. You've been patient. You, you, you've been forgiving. Because you understand the weaknesses of man's hearts. But we thank you that you said in your word, if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pray, Master, for the church, the body of Christ. Because your prayer before you left here was that there be no schisms, schisms in the church. That we might be one, even as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. We pray for oneness in the body of Christ. Oh, Lord, we pray for oneness for those who've been born again. And then we pray for salvation to come to those who have yet to receive you, surrender their wills to you, and invite you to come in and save them. You're ready to come. Your blood has already been shed. They just need to acknowledge that you died on the cross of Calvary for them also. And your word says, whosoever believeth in you shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We need you. In 2024, as never before, we need you, Lord, in every family. We need you. Everywhere we look around, somebody needs you, Lord. We need you. And we cry out that you'll have your way. Save those who are crying out for salvation and deliverance. Restore those who wandered off into prodigal country. Oh, Lord, help them to find their way back to you and to find their way home. You're able to prove and to reunite families that are broken. Oh, Lord, hear our prayer. You're able to call us all to humble ourselves and seek your face. Turn from wicked ways. You're able. As we have worshiped you, Lord, and will continue, we just ask that you meet our unspoken petitions all over this sanctuary. People are crying out for one matter or one situation or another. You hear our cries, and you stand ready to answer. We pray for those who, again, who worship it by live streaming. May they follow the steps that are being given. And may they know that once they receive you in their life, on the authority of your word, they need to connect with a Bible-based church, Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-led church, where they can grow and connect with the fellowship. Because you have made us in such a way that we are to live and serve and worship together, to love one another, even as you love us. All of these things we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ, and for his sake, the church said amen. Take me to the wall.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. bless you, my brothers and sisters. May heaven continue to smile on you and give to each one what is needed because my God will supply all of our needs. Paul said that to the church at Philippi and to every generation thereafter. He's able to supply all of our needs because of who he is, the omnipotent God. Praise God from all blessings. Hear me, Lord. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend in the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart will not lift it up his soul in the vanity and I sworn to see him. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord. bless all of our guests this morning and God bless those who have been worshiping with us this morning by live streaming again to our church family that's laid aside ill sick and 